Hello, and welcome to Micrographia, an exploration of everyday items at the micro and nano scale. Today, we're looking at this tiny wasp. While outside, tending to our garden, I noticed it stumbling around in drunken, uncoordinated circles. It appeared rather dazed, and I suspected it was near shuffling off its mortal coil. Sure enough, about 20 minutes later, it ceased moving. Not one to miss an opportunity, I rushed it to my microscope so that we could capture some images. This insect is known as a common hoverfly parasitoid wasp, and its name tells you a lot about its lifestyle. It's, well, a wasp, and it belongs to the Ichneumon family. This family is estimated to contain in upwards of 100,000 species, of which only about 25,000 are known and described in any great detail. The family's name is derived from ancient Greek, where the insects were first described by Aristotle's History of Animals, all the way back in 343 BC. But of course, they've been around a lot longer than 343 BC. This is just the first time we wrote it down. Insects are fairly robust and image quite well, assuming they haven't had a chance to dry out excessively. So I got this under the electron beam without any fancy coating and managed to get some good images. While most insects will try to find a stagnant pool of water or a quiet underside of a leaf tucked away from predators, these wasps will instead lay their eggs inside of a host, against the host's wishes, I might add. The host itself is wildly variable depending on the species of parasitoid wasp, and in many cases entirely specific to that species. A parasitic wasp is typically specialized to lay eggs in one and only one organism. In some cases, that might be another species of wasp, or even another parasitic wasp. The variety we have here parasitizes hoverflies, which are small insects of the fly family that outwardly appear to look like bees themselves. Hoverflies are great to have around your garden since they like to eat pests like aphids, so I was a little disappointed to see this particular wasp taking up residence in my garden patch. Parasitic wasps will lay their eggs with a special stinger-like appendage on its tail, known as an oviposter. They come in all shapes and sizes depending on the function. Some are quite long so that they can bore inside of trees, while others are short and stubby. The sharp business end of the oviposter in this specimen is likely retracted inside of the body. When it is time to reproduce, the wasp will find a hoverfly larva and use the oviposter to inject an egg inside of the larva. The poor, unsuspecting host will continue living its life, but will be slowly consumed from the inside out as the wasp egg grows. Eventually, it will burst open and a new wasp will emerge. This variety of wasp is thought to be parthogenetic, meaning males are not required for the reproduction process. The females reproduce by laying an unfertilized egg into the host, which then grow up into females themselves, and the process repeats. Males can occur, but are usually quite rare, according to the literature. There are a few interesting landmarks on the wasp that I wanted to call out specifically. I found the antenna section just incredibly fascinating. The antennae are composed of three main sections. At the base is a segment called the scape which attaches to the head via a socket, allowing the antenna free range of motion. The next section is called the pedicle. This attaches to a number of muscle fibers and is responsible for most of the gross movement of the antenna. Lastly is the flagellum. This makes up the bulk of the antenna and is broken up into discrete segments called flagellomeres. You can see little hairs covering the surface of the antenna. These are called sensilla, and act as the insect's sense of smell. Each sensilla is covered in tiny pores which continuously sample the air for odors and pheromones. Because an insect has two antennae, they can actually smell in stereo, which is an interesting thing to think about. When an odorant wafts by, an insect will smell it on each antenna at slightly different times, allowing it to know which direction that odor molecule comes from. There are also these long, stripe-like pores in between the hairs. I couldn't determine exactly what they are for, but presumably they serve a sensory purpose as well, perhaps allowing chemicals inside the antenna or just giving flexibility to the antenna itself. 
When looking at the wings under the optical microscope, we can see they glitter and cast an iridescent sheen. So I was expecting some sort of small periodic feature like on butterfly wings. But under the electron microscope, we can see that they are remarkably smooth. Stippled with hairs and covered in a fine texture, but no periodic structure like I was expecting. I found it interesting how aggressive the features on this insect appear. The hairs covering its body are wickedly sharp, curved, and feature a lethal looking spiral down the length. Its carapace is covered with scale-like armor with overlapping plates of exoskeleton. It just feels more dangerous than the fruit fly that we looked at, exuding a certain menace at the microscopic level. It could just be me anthropomorphizing since I know this particular insect is a predator. But nature rarely does anything for free, and so I suspect a lot of these features are this way for a particular reason, adapted precisely to help this wasp survive in its environment. I'm glad I noticed this little guy in my garden, although I'm sure the local hoverfly population was a little less enthusiastic. It was a fascinating look at an insect similar to, and yet in many ways radically different from the fruit fly. If you enjoyed this look at the microscopic world, please consider subscribing or sharing the video with a friend. If you have suggestions for future subjects to investigate, let me know in the comments down below. And if you spotted any errors, please let us know and I'll compile an addendum. And as always, thanks for watching.